Hello. My name is Greg Troy. Way back when I had a pseudonym, it was Greg hyphen Michael Troy. It doesn't exist, that person. It's Greg Troy. Um, there's something very funny, but not. It's, it's rather tragic in, in this. And I should also point out, when a fiction writer like me, fiction writer, usually tell more of the truth than nonfiction. It's hard to convince some, but no, um, fiction writers are far more accurate and truthful than nonfiction. Now, I went to the University of Toronto. <laughs> I didn't even know where. Mississauga existed, and that's where I ended up, Mississauga. Now, University of Toronto, Mississauga. And I, oh, I'm a writer, a fiction writer. Oh, some of you may have seen, some of read some of my uh, work and so on. Oh, I just should be precautious slightly. Although I have an IQ of 10,042, my speech is a little off because I had a brain hemorrhage. Now, I don't want you to get nervous or anything like that. Uh, like I said, my IQ is probably twice yours. Uh, I just have a slight speech problem, so bear with me. Now, I'm just going to read you a very short piece, and um, it's actually true. Now, um, an element of humor in it, but it's also very true. By the way, how do you like my beard? I'm having a little problem with this. It's, it's going to be very slow coming in, but my beard, uh, I'm falling in love with my beard. I've only been able to do it is because we can use this mass over our face. <laughs> because, you know. Anyway, this is how it goes, and I wouldn't mind your reaction. It's simply called Dead Dot. That's the title, Dead Dot. And I'm going to yeah, get closer to see it. Dot, dot, dot. I can only say she was a pleasant woman and generously helped me when I was in need. But discovering she was having a consistent and dedicated sexual relationship with that deceptive piece of repulsive shit seriously turned my guts. How could any honest person develop love for a character like him? I looked directly at Goldstein I knew him first at the University of Toronto. We even shared a campus downtown facility. One day he casually walks into my room while looking out my bedroom window. He emotionally informs me his older brother had just committed suicide down in South America and his father was forced to pick up his body, his body, his dead body. It's really sad if you really think about it, how disgusting that happened, you know. I frowned. Odd to me, he didn't cry or even become visually angry over the brother's sudden death. Absolutely nothing. Another thought flashed to, to mind. They do that, you know, one thought flashes to another. Many years later, and while I was living in his townhouse, 
It's funny this. I include this. Um, he had promised. He had probably never told her that I plan to buy half the house. That's true, by the way. All that period of time was so crap. I mean, telling you, it was one problem after another. Endless problems, I'm telling you. He probably never told her that I plan to buy half the house. He storms up the front stairs, and when he sees me, shouts, What is it? He shouts, I was at the change room and the guy actually calls me a disgusting faggot. <laughs> it's so funny. Funny, I thought at the time, how any ignorant schmuck like him could be offended by someone who calls him a disgusting faggot. And yet, didn't emit one tear with his brother's suicide. Sometimes, Goldstein, that is, I said to him, some people, abortions are not a, a grievous act. Dot, dot, dot. That's the end of that. It's actually in the book itself that I'm, I'm writing. I think that is so accurate. Some people I've met in life, they really are disgusting. They have no concept what honesty is. And, you know, sometimes it makes me feel abortion is not such a terrible thing. Problem is, you cannot tell ahead of time. You can't say, well, Adolf Hitler is going to uh, cost the, the lives of 40, 50, 60, 70, even 80 million souls who can't abortion. It is so weird. Anyway, this is from a book. From time to time, I plan to do this excerpts uh, that are quite accurate uh, and so on. So, once again, this is Greg Troy, and uh, thank you for listening.